I just did a review of the Blackmagic Design Ursa Mini 4K, and I figured now's a good time to do a comparison between this camera and a camera that I think is pretty similar, which is the Samsung NX1. And the reason I think this camera is similar to the Ursa Mini is they can both do 4K, and they also have similar sensor sizes, so the crop factor is pretty similar on the two. And they also shoot slow motion at 120 frames a second in HD, and they're kind of similar in price. Uh, this is more expensive than the NX1, but to, get, to make this more of a film camera, you have to get some additional equipment and it kind of bumps up the price closer to the Ursa Mini. So I figured I'd do a review of how the images look out of these cameras internally. And first I want to take a look at how they look ungraded. And I knew from the start that the Samsung didn't have as wide of a shooting profile as the Ursa Mini, but their Gamma DR still gives you some room to play with. Um, when you look at the Ursa Mini, they give you a lot of room to play with. You see how flat and desaturated it looks, and, and then when playing with it, when you're grading, you, you can see you have a lot of room to work with. But when you grade both, they both look really good, actually, and I, I really like the picture out of both of them. I, I did notice that the extra dynamic range and the extra color information did give me more room with the Ursa Mini, but that was to be expected. So one thing that really surprised me when I was comparing the footage was that the NX1 seemed to be a little bit sharper than the Ursa Mini, and it was really evident when I zoomed in and compare the two side by side. And I really didn't believe it at first, so I did some more takes. And every time, the NX1 was sharper than the Ursa Mini. And I don't think it was user error for why I, that the NX1 may have been sharper than the Ursa Mini. I mean, both had peaking on, and I was using peaking and to get the perfect focus. And also, the Ursa Mini has a display screen that is like three times larger than that of the NX1. So it should have been easier to get a better focus with the Ursa Mini than the NX1. But again, NX1 blew it away as far as sharpness. So looking at low light, I was actually kind of surprised. And as far as noise goes, the NX1 did a lot better than the Ursa Mini. But then as far as color goes, the color got really wonky with the NX1 when, when the lights went down. I'm not exactly sure why, and it was a lot harder to work with to, to get the colors kind of back to normal as compared to the Ursa Mini where the colors really stayed true to how they originally were, but there was a lot of noise in there that I could really tell. So I actually kind of handed it to the NX1 with this. Now in slow-mo, here's where it was really surprising to me. The NX1 looks way better than the Ursa Mini, and it was way easier to work with in post too. I mean, there's really no noise that I saw, and I just, I just kind of boosted the colors up a little bit and just made it look good with the NX1. And the Ursa Mini, I just had to do a lot to just try and make it look good, and I still don't think it looks that good. And it was just harder to work with all around, and didn't look as good in the end all around, so the NX1 definitely wins as far as slow-mo. The other area where the NX1 just blows away the Ursa Mini is in audio. And really any camera can blow away the Ursa Mini as far as audio, because the internal audio you get out of the Ursa Mini is, is terrible and unusable. And the audio out of the NX1 is usable, so <laughs> clearly wins. And I'll let you give a listen. So I'm going to do a little audio test right now, and I've got the Rode NTG4, and it's self-powered right now, that's what the little green light means, and it's running into a Juice Link and then into a DSLR, the Samsung NX1, and check, 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 check. So this is what it sounds like into a Juice Link into the NX1. Now I'm going to put it into the Ursa Mini. Hit record. Check, 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 recording into the Ursa Mini. Check, 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 recording into the Ursa Mini. The Rode NTG4 is self-powered. Ursa Mini settings are input, mic low. So there's my comparison of the Ursa Mini and the NX1. And I really can't say that one camera wins over the other or, or I like one better than the other. I mean, they're both different and they both kind of have little quirks that you have to work with. And I mean, I guess it depends on what your shooting style is to really depend on what would be a better camera for you. I mean, as far as low light, I do think the NX1 is better in low light as far as a cleaner image, but the colors get a little wonky, so you do have to watch out for that. And slow-mo, NX1 is definitely way better in slow-mo. Ursa Mini doesn't compare. And then audio again, 
the Ursa Mini can't even compete with audio. I, I don't even think it really counts as audio with how noisy it is and the problems I've had with the audio as compared to the NX1, which you get normal, fine, clean audio out of it. So I can't complain about that. But as far as a good picture and a wide range to work with and color grading, if you enjoy color grading and working with the visuals and, and being able to boost lighting a little bit, the Ursa Mini gives you a lot more range to work with. And as far as normal shooting settings, you're gonna enjoy working with the picture a lot more with the Ursa Mini.